Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. Now we continue with section 7.2, configuring EIGRP for IPv4. This is part of chapter 7, EIGRP. Configuring EIGRP, EIGRP routing domain. So this is the topology that we're going to be using to configure it. Show running configuration. If I do there, then I can see that I have configured an IP addresses on this uh, router one, for example, R1. Show running config. Interface G00 has got this IP address 172.16.1.1 forward slash 24, so 255.255.255.0. S000 has got 172.16.3.1 and it's slash 30, so 255.255.255.252. S000 is got is the DC, so it's got the clock rate. And then interface S001 has got 192.168.10.5 IP address and it's forward slash 30, so 255.255.255.252. And then we have no shutdown on either one. No shutdown, it will not display on the when you do short running config. The same thing or similar th uh, configuration to just change the IP address on router 2. So interface G00, that interface. 172.16.2.0 or 2.1 because 2.0 is a network and forward slash 24 then interface S000 172.16.3.2 forward slash 30 and S001 this interface towards router 3 192.168.10.192.168.10.9 this is the DCE and then interface S010 which is towards our ISP router 209 165 200 225 so 225 address 209 165 200 dot 225 and it's forward slash 27 so it's 255 255 255 224 on router 3 this router here we have gigabit ethernet interface one nine two one six eight dot one dot one. the serial interface this is a dc towards router 1 192 .168 .10 .6. And then serial 001 towards router 2. Autonomous system and process IDs. An autonomous system, or AAS for short, is a collection of networks under the administrative control of a single entity that presents a common routing policy to the internet. For example, this company here, whatever, say the ISP here, ISP1, has one AAS. It's in control of all the routing protocol that's happening within autonomous system number. When another one company is talking to another company, they usually use exterior protocol, so like BGP. But within interior protocols, we have EIGRP, OSPF, RIP version 2, and so on. All these are within autonomous system number. This is described in RFC 1930, and AS numbers are assigned by IA and A, and it's RIRs. So for example, these autonomous system numbers, we there are some private ones, that you can just pick but usually you would go and purchase them you can't just pick one randomly so the numbers the AS numbers is like IP addresses we have to go and purchase them for our company and then our company on the internet it will be known by that autonomous system number who needs an autonomous system number or ASN ISPs internet backbone providers large institution connection to other entities they also have an autonomous system number what routing protocol is used between those providers? Well, only one of them, which is Exterior Gateway Routing Protocol, or BGP. The vast majority of companies and institutions with IP networks that do not need an autonomous system number because they come under the control of a larger entity such as an ISP. So router EIGRP command. When we go to global configuration mode, we type config t to go to global configuration mode. Once we're there, we type router and then question mark. This is our routing protocols available for us. The one that we're interested in is EIGRP, Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, or EIGRP for short. So router EIGRP one. That one is a process ID. For example, it's called autonomous system. So the one that we entered earlier, so EIGRP, and then that's one there, it's our autonomous system number. But it's really a process ID. But the, the thing is, it's like an autonomous system number because every router in our network, in our EIGRP domain, has to have the same number for it to become neighbors. So both EIGRP and OSPF, they use process ID. 
to represent an instance of the respective routing protocol running on the router. EIGIP refers this to autonomous system number, actually functions as a process ID. We can have anything from 1 to 65535. The difference between OSPF and EIGIP is that the autonomous system number in EIGIP has a match for them to be neighbors on the same uh, process. In the OSPF, the process ID doesn't have to match. Must be same on all routers on EIGIP routing domain. EIGIP routing ID, the EIGIP router ID is used to uniquely identify each router in the EIGIP routing domain. Criteria for deriving to the router ID is configured router ID, configured with the EIGIP router ID router ID command, some version of iOS will accept just router ID. Again, it's very similar to, to OSPF, yeah, if you watch those videos. Highest loopback IPv4 address. If there's no loopback address, then highest active interface IPv4 address. Current router ID. Given this topology, what would be what would be chosen as router ID for router 1, router 2, and router 3? So if we look at the router 1, for example, has got this interface, 172.16.1.1. 172.16.3.1 and 192.168.10.5 we have not configured router ID has not loop back any loop back interfaces so it's going to pick the highest physical IP address so it's going to be 192.168.10.5 if you look at the router 2 for example the highest physical IP address is 209.165.200.225 router 3 for example when you look at it, the highest IP address is 192.168.10.10. So configuring the router ID gives the administrator to selectively choose in a specific IP address to represent the EIGIP router. So rather than just letting it pick randomly, not randomly, but pick one of them. And if you are in router 1, it's very hard to know that, that okay, that's router 2. It would be easy to say 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. So we want to do router ID 1.1.1.1 for router 1. So we go to EIGIP routing pro, uh, uh, configuration mode. Then EIGIP router ID, EIGIP router hyphen ID 1.1.1.1. Router ID for router 2, same thing. And then router ID for router 3, we go to EIGIP configuration mode and we say EIGIP router ID 3333. Show IP protocols. When we do show IP protocols, what we can see here is our router ID, which is configured, 1.1.1.1. Other some good information that we can find here, which we're gonna cover a bit later as well, but are the, the K values. These K values, they have to match. So for some reason, if you if you see that two neighbors are not, two EIGIP routers are not becoming neighbors, you can check these K values. So the, the autonomous system has to match. So you have to be careful with that. So AS1 is here, and the weights, the K, weight, the K values, they should match as well. So K1 default is 1, and K3 default is 1. The network command in EIGRP has the same functions as in other interior gateway protocol routing protocols. You type whatever networks you want to advertise. Network 192.168.10.0 for example, this is in router 2, we advertise in this network. You do not need, if the network is a class full, in the class full range, then you don't need to put the wildcard mask at all. So for example, 192.168.10 is in class C, so we don't need to put the, the wildcard mask. What does it do? This Any interface on this router that matches the network address in the network command will be enabled to send and receive EIGIP updates. So for example, as soon as we type network, then that interface is going to start sending and receiving EIGRP updates. This network or subnet will be included on EIGRP routing updates. So we got the router 1, router EIGRP, network 192.168.10, this network, dot zero, network 172.16.0.0, so whatever this network we put, now all the, net, all the interfaces that belong within that parent network they will be included on the EIGRP updates. So 172.16.1.0 and 172.16.3.0, they will be started to send and receive hello messages or hello EIGRP messages. So all interfaces belonging to the class full 
172.16.0.0 forward slash 16 address are enabled for EIGIP. Including the wildcard mask will only advertise the subnet. For example, to configure only the subnet 192.168.10.8 forward slash 30 on S001 interface, you would type the wildcard mask as well. So 172.16 this network and this network will be advertised for router 2 now. And then as soon as we advertise those two networks, then we should have a neighbor adjacency with router 1. Think of a wildcard mask as inverse of subnet mask. To calculate the inverse of the subnet mask, you need to subtract the subnet mask from all 255s. So 255, 255, 255, 255 minus your subnet mask. So for example, if this is your subnet mask slash 30, 255, 255, 255, 252, all you do is Subtract that and you get the wildcard mask is 0003. So then you can say network 192.168.10.8 and then wildcard mask 0003. Some Cisco IO software version also let you enter the subnet mask, which you shouldn't, but the router will, will fix it later on, will correct it on the running configuration. So for example, you can type network 192.168.10.8 and wrongly put the subnet mask, which you should put the wildcard mask, but the router will fix that for you. The network command, again, back to the, uh, what we advertise in here, router2 with the subnet mask. When we do short run in uh, config, the router has fixed that, has fixed it from the subnet mask, it's gone to a wildcard mask. Alternatively, we could also use either network 192.168.10.8.0003, or more specifically, just the interface, you go 192.168.10.9, actually the interface, and then four zeros. On the router 3, so on the network 192.168.1.0, then we advertise in the network with the router 1, 192.168.10.4.0003, and then the network towards router 2, and we should get neighbors with them. So discovering the neighbors, the first is the hello messages. As soon as we enable EIGRP on the interface on, and we advertise one of the interfaces, that interface is going to start sending hello messages saying hello, I'm router 1, is there anyone there? Then as soon as we, the neighbor receives that hello, it's going to send us an update. Hello, here is my all routing information and it will send a hello back. So before any EIGRP packets can be exchanged between routers, EIGRP must first discover the neighbors. So EIGRP routers discover the neighbors by establishing adjacencies with the neighbors routers using hello packets. Once it gets that update and the hello message, the router is going to add that on the routing table, on the sorry neighboring table. So once the router B, for example, on this side, gets a message hello message from router A on this side, it will add it to the root neighboring table. It will send the update. The router on this side will add that on the routing table as well. On, sorry, on the neighboring table. To verify the adjacencies, we use the command show IP EIGRP neighbors to view the neighbor table and verify that EIGRP has been established and adjacency with its neighbors. So show IP EIGRP neighbors, here is telling us the neighbors that we discovered, not the router ID, just the neighbors, the IP address uh, or the interface IP address of the neighbor. The local interface receiving EIGRP packets, hello packets amount of time since the neighbor was added to the neighboring table, seconds we remain before we declare the neighbor down, reset the whole time when a hello is received, the output display list of each adjacent neighbor, the command is, this command is very useful for troubleshooting the IGRP following by ping and show IP interface brief. So what if the ping is successful and the IGRP still does not see the router as a neighbor? Well here we can do some troubleshooting. You need to know that are both neighbors configured with the same EIGRP process ID. So they have to have that autonomous system number exactly the same. Is the directly connected network included in the EIGRP network statements? So for example, router 1 and router 2, they're not going to become neighbors if this network is not included on either router. Is the passive interface command inappropriately configured, thus preventing the EIGRP hello packets on the interface? So for example, if you say passive interface, this interface, router 1 is not going to send any hellos. And then we're not going to have neighbors. Show IP protocols. 
for example, again, we go back to this command, which is very good command, very useful. It's going to show us all the protocols running on our router. So we can see here that we are in AS autonomous system number one. We can see our metric weight, the values. They have to match. This has to match as well. Router ID and the, inter the autonomous system. For internal network, we have autonomous or AS um, uh, administrative distance, sorry, administrative distance of 90 the external network administrative distance of 170. Automatic summarization is disabled by default now is disabled on the previous operating system it used to be enabled so the first thing we did when we configured EIJP was say no auto summary. I would recommend you do that anyway just in case you have an old uh, operating system that you're working on so no auto hyphen summary it's a good command soon as you enable EIJP after you configure the router ID the networks that we're rooting for, these are the two networks we're rooting for, and the information, routing information sources, where are we getting our information? So wh where, what's our neighbor's IP address? So routing protocol and process ID, AS number. Here we see the K values, composite metric. Router EIJP uh, ID. Here we can see the administrative distance. If the summarization is enabled or disabled, what networks we are routing for and routing information sources list to verify the EIGIP routing table show IP root begin gateway so we can see we don't want to see the codes we can see that we learned few routes with the EIGIP now we know the route 172.16.2.0 this network here we learned the router one administrative distance of 90 that's our composite metric via the neighbors one IP address 172.16.3.2 and we learned it on this interface S000 that's the best network or best path to get to the destination here we have another network that we learned from router 3 192.168.1.0 through 192.168.10.6 from this interface and we here in this hellos or this network we learn it from S001 and we learned one more route that is shared between router 2 and router 3 so 192.168.10.8 we have learned that network now this network we are load balancing so that's why you can see two entries we can send them via the neighbor this neighbor 6 192.168.10.6 or via the neighbor 172.16.3.2 to verify the routing table on router 2 show IP route again begin the gateway so you can see the router 2 has learned the network 172.16.1.0 with this network from 172.16.3.1 so it's coming from 3.1 and it's learned on this interface so this is the exit interface then we learn the network of router 3 the LAN of router 3 192.168.1.0 and that's the exit interface and this the network they shared between router 2 1 and 3 192 168 10 to 4 and we load balance in here we see the same information or similar information on the routing table of router 3 so you can see that router 3 knows LAN of router 1 172.16.1.0 LAN of router 2 172.16.2.0 and the serial link between router 1 and 2 172.16.3.0 forward slash 30 and that's being load balanced okay now we're going to configure the lab 7.225 configuring basic EIGIP with IPv4 please select the link if you want to see the lab thank you very much for watching my video and hopefully to see you in the future videos bye bye